driverless cars are making a lot of people very excited. To begin with though, we're probably going to need vehicles with some kind of manual override, or different levels of assistance. That's what the UK's Transport Research Laboratory is looking at, how autonomous vehicles can take and return control in a way that's not dangerous or uncomfortable for the driver. Digicar is a, a real car and it's surrounded by a, se a series of display screens and presenting on those screens graphics to give the driver a sense of the outside world. Uh, there's a rear screen so the driver uses all their mirrors as they would normally. The car has a motion system so it will pitch and roll and move vertically just to give the driver a sensation of acceleration forces. And then the driver uses all the controls as they would normally. And chooses to accelerate, can choose whatever speed they want to go at, and we can look at and record all the data from the way they're using the vehicle. All right, so let's kick this off then. Um, what do I need to do first in order to, to get this going? Great, so we're going to start in full manual mode. So it's basically a completely normal car. Mm -hmm. You start the car with the key. Yep. Uh, put the engine, put your foot on the clutch, uh, put it into gear, release the handbrake, and away you go. Make sure I don't stall. Fantastic, that would have been embarrassing otherwise. <laughs> Great, so we're underway. Normal vehicle, you use the gears, steering, pedals and clutch as you would normally. So we have speakers in the back that are giving you those sort of audio cues as well, which I guess is important to give you a sense of speed. We're getting the sound of the engine, but also some uh, vibration from a, a subwoofer to give you a sense of the, the engine as well. Okay, so what I'll do now, now you're, you're getting the hang of the driving, I'm gonna put you into full auto mode. So okay. if I press the button, oh. so the vehicle is now in control. <laughs> so I can just take everything off, yeah? Sure Don't to touch anything. Continue driving. It's very strange. It really does feel like a ghost is pretty much in control of the car. That's what we're interested in. We're interested in the, the feeling of the, of the participant as the vehicle switches from one mode to another. I mean, we're going quite quickly, like I feel quite apprehensive, like, you know, when it's hurtling towards a corner, to know that I have to put my trust in the car to take that corner appropriately. Again, that's another thing we'd be interested in, how you need to tune these systems, how much variation there is between participants in how fast they will accept a vehicle going through uh, different environments, whether it's a highway or, or an urban environment. Okay, and lastly is auto pedals and gears, so now you're in charge of the uh, steering, but Whoa. the vehicle will do the speed. Right, okay. This is quite scary. To know that you're not in full control, you're putting your trust in the car to drive safely. We're really interested in those issues, so the, the acceptance by the driver of the control by the system and their acceptance of um, the way the vehicle behaves and their trust in that it will, will work correctly every time. What are the things that you're looking for? What are these um, cameras going to be picking up in particular with my, with my eyes and my, my body movement? When we're transitioning between the modes, we're looking at how the driver recovers situation awareness when uh, re regaining control of the vehicle. So do they check their mirrors? Are they looking around them? And then how do they interact with the controls? Do they decide to slow suddenly just while they get their bearings? Just what is the mechanics of that process so that when these systems go live out in the real world, we can understand what, uh, what exactly might happen? I must admit, I haven't been checking my mirrors as much as I should be. We've done a lot of work on driver distraction. And I think that's going to be a, a, a big factor here is that when the vehicle is automated, you might be still relying on the driver to have some attention of what's going on around them. But I think given the opportunity, a lot of people will engage in other distractions like texting, like uh, looking at their phone, like making calls. And then if we require the vehicle to, uh, for them to re-engage with the driving task, how does that happen? How do they uh, re-establish control and, and situation awareness? How often do you see people wanting to retake control as well, even though the car is you know, fully autonomous? Like, does that happen quite a lot? Like, people naturally feel like they need to adjust the speed? This is something we have to work out. We have to understand what situations <laughs> cause drivers to feel like they need to regain control and, and take back control of, of the vehicle. The simulator isn't perfect. For instance, the lack of pedestrians and vehicles is pretty unrealistic. TRL says it's developing its autonomous systems though, so that in the future, the car can respond to obstacles inside its virtual world. But this is all just a first step to handling one of the many problems facing autonomous car technology at the moment. In the end, it's simulators like DigiCar that could shape the systems that end up inside our future driverless cars. If you raise surface, where the, the surface basically comes alive. Okay. So we have these what we call finger guides that come out of the screen and help improve the usability mm -hmm. of, of, of the keyboard. 